objective protected at all costs. What is up guys, I am Get Flanked, and today we're going to go over the top 5 beginner mistakes in Rainbow Six Siege. These are lessons that I had to learn the hard way, and as I continue to get better and improve in this game, it's things that I think have made the biggest difference for me, and I wanted to pass it along to you guys, that way it can help shorten your learning curve, hopefully you'll get more enjoyment out of the game, and for you guys who've been playing the game for a while, aren't beginners, please put your tips down below, let me know what you think of my list, and add any in the comments that you think will help out the newer players, because that's what we're here, we're all here to get better, and that's what I'm hoping to do with this video, so with that said, let's get into it. Okay, getting started here, the number one beginner mistake in Rainbow Six Siege, I believe, is breaching blind. And if you're not sure what I mean by breaching blind, you're about to see it on the screen right now. You're going to see the enemy player here, he just busts open this window and jumps on in. Doesn't drone it, doesn't peek it, nothing. And look how easy of a kill this is for me. I mean, there's no challenge there whatsoever. <laughs> And he could have done a lot of different things better there. And you guys have to learn from that. You've got to stop doing that. If you're doing that right now, use your drones more effectively. And that's really another tip rolled into this one. Um, you got to know what you're getting into when you're breaching. And you can do that by using drones. You can do that by breaching with teammates and you know they drone they tell you what they see and you breach there's a lot of different ways that you can breach much more effectively than what that guy did and it's really the difference of you know staying alive and getting into the objective and putting pressure on the enemy team or just getting easy kills and putting your team in a bad position that player right there was twitch twitch is a very powerful operator in this game and now that team doesn't have them so um you got to breach more effectively you've got to use the tools that you have in order to breach and stay alive you know if he had just droned that he would have seen me could have possibly gotten a kill on me instead of me killing him um, if nothing else at least he knows I'm there and can go somewhere else to breach um, so that's a lesson learned that's probably the number one thing I see from beginning players and it just requires patience guys use your tools available to you to be smarter and uh, you'll you'll stay alive and do much better in this game Okay guys, number two on the list, and this is absolutely huge. Most new players don't exploit the peeker's advantage in this game. And if you're not sure what a peeker's advantage is, a quick explanation here without going too far into detail, basically there's latency in this game or lag. And what that does is it gives an advantage to the person who is peeking the corner and puts the person who is sitting and watching the corner at a disadvantage. So if you are in a position where you're watching a line of sight sitting still and somebody comes around that corner then they're going to see you before you see them by maybe a couple milliseconds but in a game like this a couple milliseconds can be a huge advantage now in order to exploit the peeker's advantage in this game it does require you to play more aggressive and i think that's why most new rainbow six siege players struggle with it because i feel like we all kind of go through a progression in this game when we first started out when we first play it maybe like our first couple of games we do play aggressive we run around we're used to playing battlefield or cod and you know and and how those games play out and then after a few times that we get one bursted to the head and just melted without even getting a shot off or seeing the enemy we slow down and uh, we kind of get into a, a turtle shell philosophy where we just hold down a line of sight and play really timid and just hope that somebody walks into our sights and gives us an easy kill. And I understand why. Again, this game is different. This game, you know, you can get melted one shot headshots make this game a lot different than what we're used to. Uh, but you have to learn that in this game, the advantage in so many situations goes to the aggressor. And if you're, if you're not willing to put yourself out there and be the aggressor, you're going to lose a lot of gunfights that you could have won just by peeking. You know, not, not saying you have to roam like crazy or around the map, but if you feel like somebody's around the corner, don't be afraid to check it out with your sights up, play it smart, try and put your sights at head level and be ready to fire if you see somebody. That peeker's advantage is huge in this game. And if you watch the better players, they know how to exploit it to the maximum. And once you go from being timid, being scared, and, and just kind of sitting in your corner to learning when to peek, when not, that's when you're really going to take steps and improve as a player. Okay, guys, number three on the list is not paying attention to what game mode you're playing or not playing each game mode differently. A lot of players, regardless of whether they're playing secure area, bomb, or hostage, are going to pick the same operator 
and play each of those game modes just like they would play the other one. And that's incorrect. Each of those game modes require a little bit of a different strategy and adjustments to your game plan. And I still struggle with this, guys. There's a lot of times where I'm playing hostage and I roam a little bit too far away from the objective and I give the enemy team a free round win because I'm too far away to do anything when they grab the hostage. How many of you guys have selected fuse and went up to the objective, put in a cluster charge and blown up the hostage and lost the round instantly. I mean, I know it's happened to me, I have to admit it. I'm sure it's happened to you guys at least once and nothing screams I'm a noob like doing that. It pisses the other team off so much. I'm sorry, it pisses your team off so much. So you have to pay attention to what game mode you're playing. If you're playing hostage, you need to be aware of that. Don't pick fuse or at the very least, don't throw a cluster charge in the objective. Do it away from the objective. Those are things that you need to pay attention to and you can only do that if you learn to play each game mode a little bit differently and learn what strategy adjustments you have to make between those game modes. All right guys, number four on the list of beginner mistakes is not using the right operator. I feel like there are some operators in this game that are much more beginner friendly than other operators. And an example of this would be Kavera. Kavera is not what I would call a beginner friendly operator. And that's unfortunate because you do see a lot of beginning player selector. And I get it, she's a fun operator to use, but you really have to have a lot of map knowledge in order to use her effectively and get the most out of her. What's an example of a beginner friendly operator? Number one that comes to mind would be Rook. And Rook isn't sexy, he's not one of the most exciting operators to use, but as a beginner, if you use Rook, you set down his plates at the beginning of the round, all your teammates grab him up, and even if you die a second into the round, you've still helped your team out. And you're not gonna put them in a huge bind if you go down early. Uh, another example, and, and keep in mind, what you should be looking for with these operators is, is what I call passive abilities or gadgets. What I mean by that are the abilities or gadgets that don't require you to be alive in order for them to help your team. Mute is an example of that. Once you set down a signal disruptor, even if you die early in the round, those signal disruptors that you put down are still there and they're still helping your team. Jaeger is another example of that with his ADS. Now, I don't recommend Jaeger as a beginning player. I think he's much more effective in the hands of a, of a more experienced player. Um, but that's just another example of a passive ability or gadget. An example of a gadget that isn't passive um, would be Smoke. Smoke is one of the best operators in the game but you need some map knowledge, you need some knowledge in this game, you have to have some experience in order to know how to use his smoke effectively, when to use it, when not to, and when you do, he's very effective, but it's not beginner friendly, and it requires you to be alive in order to use. All right guys, number five on the list, and this isn't sexy, this probably isn't what you guys wanna hear, but it's the honest to God truth. You need to be practicing, you need to be warming up in terrorist hunt. See, the problem with this game and just jumping straight into a casual or God forbid ranked game as soon as you start up is that you can go rounds in this game without firing a single bullet. You can go an entire game, maybe only get into one or two legit gunfights where you were actually like in a heads up gunfight. So you really need to start out by going into terrorist hunt and getting your aim down, practicing in there, even if it's not just warming up. You need to go in there and practice and a couple things, um, you need to practice effectively. First of all, you need to go into your controller settings through the options in the game, and you need to turn off aim assist. Aim assist doesn't exist in multiplayer, but in Terrorist Hunt, there is actually aim assist. I believe that's what how they label it. Turn that off. That way you're practicing just like you're gonna play in multiplayer. And then as you're going through Terrorist Hunt, don't just run through killing everybody. Practice peeking like you would in multiplayer. Practice killing the, the nitro charges that are everywhere on the, on the move. Don't just sit still and shoot them. Practice strafing and shooting them. Mess with your sensitivity settings. See what works best for you. Make sure you're going for headshots on the terrorists. You know, practice you know, your peeks. Everything that you normally would do in multiplayer, try that in terrorist hunt. And I'm telling you, it's gonna help you jump into your casual games or your ranked games with much better aim. And it's also just gonna help you get your movement down, get your leans down. It just makes such a huge difference. If you guys aren't spending time practicing in terrorist hunt, you're really not taking this game serious. And that's fine, but I don't know why you're watching this video if you're not trying to get better. 
a huge part of getting better guys is going to be in terrorist hunt and again it's not fun it's not necessarily sexy but it is the truth and that can really be said for all the tips in this video. If you clicked on this video hoping that I was going to give you some type of tip that was going to instantly change your life and make you a beast automatically in this game, you're probably disappointed. But I'm here to tell you there is no such thing, and anybody who tells you differently isn't being honest. The best thing you can do, guys, is spend time in the game and play. And you'll get better the more you do it. This video is designed to help ease those growing pains that we all go through. I'm still going through them myself. But I'm learning as we go along here and I'm passing that on to you guys in hopes that it's going to shorten your learning curve and uh, we're going to get better together. So if you guys enjoyed this, please make sure you like and subscribe and I'll have more coming your way here soon.